Everyone knows that the Metal Gear Solid franchise is one of the most beloved gaming franchises around, and its creator, Mr. Hideo Kojima, is widely regarded to be one of the greatest game directors in the industry. But what if I told you it wasn't his genius? that made Metal Gear great. My name's Henry Cooper, I'm here with Mr. Gareth Evans, and we're gonna have a little chat about it. Blasphemy. Blasphemer! I know, it's blasphemy. I'm gonna get this out up top. I'm what a big fan of- Did you just say that you hated Kojima? He's totally That's overrated. What I said. Sorry. Yeah. And he, he's not the he's not the game director that everyone makes him out to be. That is yep. total trash. Is that what you just said? The, Apps, you, how you, dare you? can you? quote me. You can quote me, that's what I said. No, no, of course not. I, I'm a big fan of the Metal Gear franchise. I think uh, Mr. Hideo Kojima is an eccentric fool, but I love what he does. <laughs> he's mad, but I think he, he's, he's grand. But essentially, Metal Gear Solid 1 may not all be down to him in terms of like why it's so so popular and so great. So in case you aren't familiar with what the game is, it's Metal Gear Solid. It's a really stupid name, but it's essentially all about spies and big robots. Let's talk about the name for a second. Metal Gear Solid. Yeah. What does that... Metal Gear... Is there so, an explanation? So Metal Gear Solid. Metal Gear... Never thought about it, but that, it's weird. Yeah, it is a weird name. Well, Metal Gear is the name of the robots, and I'm, I guess like... Cause, the solid version of the, yeah. of the Metal well, Gear robot. Well, the solid because that's the character... We talked about this in our podcast, which should be available... Maybe right now, maybe on Friday. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, so it's called Metal Gear because they're big robots, and robots are generally made of metal and have gears. And okay. as we discussed in the podcast, Kojima is great at naming things. <laughs> uh, no, it wasn't the podcast, it was earlier this week. Great at naming things. And Solid is because you play as a character called Solid Snake. Metal Gear, so it's just random words from, from certain characters I in think the game. he gets a Scrabble board and shakes it and just throws it out, and it's like, boom, Death Stranding. No Makes one knows sense. what it means, but there we go. That game essentially... Uh, actually, you um, just actually, trigger people. Death Stranding means that whales beached on a on a beach, yeah, which means yeah, that they're actually yeah. dead, but they're not dying. And and oh yeah, actually, actually, got those five of those comments already. I will double um <laughs> actually you because I did a video on it a while ago telling you all about it. So I want you to go watch that before you tell me that I don't know anything. Anyway, this isn't about Death Stranding; it's about Metal Gear. It essentially invented the stealth genre as one of the most cinematic games at the time. Kind of one of the big 3D games as well. Very very critically acclaimed. 94 on Metacritic with a 9.2 user score. That blew me away. I mean, I know I love it, but apparently other people do too. Well, you know what? I don't like Kojima games, but I like Metal Gear Solid. Well, there, there you go. So it must be a good game. And you want to know why you like it? It's because someone else did a whole lot of it. Really? So it tell, wasn't a tell, game tell director or anything, but Metal Gear, Japanese game made by a Japanese company, Konami. But according to a article on Polygon, there was someone else who made it what it is today. And that is a guy called Jeremy Blaustein or Blaustein. I'm going to go Blaustein. I'm gonna, I'm Jeremy Blasphemy, more like. Ha, nice. <laughs> so on, on Polygon, the article is The Bizarre True Story of Metal Gear Solid's English Translation Written by the Man Who Did It So he's kind of been the unsung hero of the English version of Metal Gear for the past 20 odd years This guy worked at Konami during the 90s as a Japanese to English localization Localization? Uh, because it's a little more than just translating it, yeah. it's a bit more So he's worked on a bunch of different games Such as Animaniacs, Batman and Robin, Sparkster, Biker Mice from Mars, Tiny Toon Adventures, Contra Hardcore, Snatcher Vandal Hearts and Castlevania Symphony of the Night. So he was a writer, translator, and even voice director on all of those titles. And he's, he's, he quite fancies himself as a bit more of a writer than just a translator. And says, Translation is not a science, it's an art. One must take liberties with the text to capture the essence of the words in an attempt to recreate the feeling of the original for a very different audience with a very different cultural background. That essence is found less in the words themselves than the spaces between the words. It is a tone, an ever-present, unspoken attitude, and in this case, it was a very confident tone, and that's referring to uh, Metal Gear, because Metal Gear, it's quite yeah. known for its military fidelity, if that makes yeah. sense. Like, they use a lot of military terms and, like, real-world weapon references and yeah. whatnot. Well, I've got to hand it to him. He, he sounds like a pretentious artist. Oh, yeah. So it's he found less in the words themselves than in the spaces between the words. Yeah, right on, dude. So he, he, <laughs> he fits in really well with uh, with Kojima and, and yeah. the like. But uh, he didn't necessarily get on too well with Kojima after the translation, but we'll get on to that in a minute. In the article, he kind of establishes how hard it was to do the translation for Metal Gear because it was so enormous, especially for at the time. This was exciting. 3D games were not yet common at the time. It was clear that Metal Gear Solid was something very, very special and a big departure from both Snatcher and Police Noughts. I left with three massive blue three-ring binders containing the script, art materials, and other supplemental notes. So that's 
That's huge, huge, huge undertaking. I mean, the, the thing with Kojima games is that they're notorious for the amount of dialogue and the cutscenes, cut scenes yeah. just like for days, right? It's a Kojima game, it has to have loads of dialogue, yeah. so it's a lot of work for this guy. Yeah, just one guy as well, he had to do it completely on his own, and it was in the 90s, so the internet was there, but it's certainly not what it is now. Mm. He had no, like, no YouTube, no Wikipedia to troll through, he just had to use his own knowledge and, and read and research it himself. Well, you could search it on on the internet, but if your man picked up the phone and started using the yeah. phone while you're through yeah. the search, I mean, you're, you're out of luck. Poor uh, M Mrs. Blaustein's got to go get her <laughs> shit from the bakery or something. She's got to call up, make sure it's there. Uh, so he goes on. People may have a hard time really appreciating the fact that, at the time, the internet was not the thing you know now. There was no YouTube, no Wikipedia, no Reddit, and there were no other translations of similar work to reference. The word localization barely existed in the business in 1997. I was all on my own and no one was looking over my shoulder. Now, in some ways, that sounds quite nice because it mean meant he could really kind of just do what he wanted and evidently he did because he changed a few things but also without someone guiding you yeah. you're probably going to step on someone's toes well, which he, is seems like what he did with Kojima because he wasn't too happy about well, it well he was working in, from the offices right oh uh, no so he, he lived in, uh, worked in Japan with Kojima and that for doing other games but for this one he was at home in I think it was Massachusetts right they sent him like the VHS copy of the opening cutscene you know where he, he like yeah. swims through the through the water and he worked with that and then sent his materials to them. So no guidance whatsoever. No. And the way they were paying him was really weird as well because instead of paying him monthly, they paid all of it as a lump sum right at the end of the project once he'd done it all. Yeah. So he was basically in poverty for that whole time with his family. Like he had a wife and two kids. Struggling artist. Struggling. Yeah, struggling artist. Struggling artist. Struggling artist. Struggling artist. The cinematic nature of the game made it a lot harder too because games weren't really like that at the time with lots of camera sweeps and well, like movies. Yeah, trying to be movies, <laughs> like wannabe movies. There was so much to consider. The tempo of the voices was tricky. The overall depth of the language had to match the length of the scene. But what was much, much worse was that the Japanese word order is reversed when compared to English. I had to play with the dialogue quite a bit to match the words to the cuts and the dissolves of the camera that was much more cinematic and active than in other games of the time. It's not like I could just change how a scene was edited to make it easier to translate. So again, that's if, if, the, if what the character is saying doesn't line up with what's on the screen, it's just not going to work. Work, so we had to yeah. change that sort of stuff. He had stuff. very strict parameters, like the the character was only m moving his lips for a certain amount of time. He had to well, fit the Metal Gear, it's, it's, it's head bobbing, and yet, you know, <laughs> they, don't, they don't move their lips yeah. in that one. He had no uh, room for being able to change the edit or anything, yeah. so he had to fit the words in. But one of the big things which he changed, which I think is the most important thing to know, is he added in so many military-specific and military jargon words to make it sound more appropriate, because he, he read like a bunch of books by real veterans or about soldiers and and that sort of stuff to figure out exactly how they spoke to each other and the kind of words they would use and ended up adding in some of the most memorable things about Metal Gear. So he applied the word halo, meaning high altitude, low opening, for the the jump that Snake makes at the beginning because he shoots out of a helicopter or whatever and then goes underwater. Kojima would just said, yeah, he, he jumps out from a high altitude and opened, opens his parachute shortly before hitting the ground. But he, was, he figured out there's a real world thing for that called and Halo. applied it called Halo. Uh, Snake's iconic earpiece, this this one blows my mind, his iconic earpiece was just called a wireless by Kojima. By Kojima. But this what we know it now is the codec. And that's when it blips up right. and it's like text on the screen. There's two pictures of the character speaking. That That's, you know, a That's staple of what the game is. And then there's on-site procurement, which is a word, a phrase he invented. That refers to when Snake has to pick up all of his weapons on-site. Mm -hmm. He doesn't go in with anything. And he had a hard time with that because that's not something a soldier would ever do because you would go in armed. Like, yeah. obviously it will happen every now and then, but you're going to try and avoid it if possible. But Kojima just called it acquire locally, which sounds like fine. It's nothing mm -hmm. particularly wrong with it, but on-site procurement sounds just more... It sounds more military. Yeah, it? exactly. There are other little changes as well to make the characters... Uh, a bit more fleshed out and adds a bit more personality to them like the, the original line was just I'm not a colonel anymore and that's when uh, Snake is talking to colonel and colonel's saying well that's not who I am but he added an extra bit which was I'm not a colonel anymore just a retired old warhorse so that it's not, again it's not like a massively important thing but it makes him a bit more he seems old he seems yeah, experienced a bit more character but, doesn't yeah. it and maybe this is just an instance of when he's had to fill out the space because maybe in Japanese I'm not a colonel anymore the is a longer, a longer, longer yeah. phrase than it is in the English in the English language, so he's had to throw in some extra words. There's a great example here of kind of hammy dialogue from Snake, which is, I'm just a guy who can only find meaning on the battlefield, and it's it sounds like someone's written it and not like somebody would say it, so he changed it and it sounds way better. I'm just a man who's good at what he does, killing. 
and that makes Snake sound so much more like there's he's not happy about what he's done mm. or what he has to do, but he's good at it. And there's a, a lot more subtext there, which I think is really interesting. Then there's a bunch of stuff about how his personal life impacted the English dialogue. Like he had to use, he had to take Dizapam or uh, it's called Valium. I, I didn't yeah. realize that they were two, both the same thing. But Dizapam is what Snake takes to steady his aim when he's trying to fight Sniper Wolf. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a little like it was the same thing that was going to be in the game anyway. But it, his life was kind of marrying up with it. Snake was always a smoker, but he added lines like, you don't know how good a cigarette tastes in the morning, because he was smoking at the time to deal with the stress of the translation. translating all this stuff. <laughs> like, So it's incredible how much work this guy put in, and no one really knows about it. And I think Kojima is great, as I've said before, but he gets all the credit for it. Yeah, I mean, it is interesting to, to see how much input and maybe impact that this guy had on the game and the script for, you know, some of these iconic lines that people remember. Um, maybe, you know, it's not all Kojima to credit for that. And yeah. um, it's interesting to hear because, you know, Kojima gets enough credit. Yeah. But does he? I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's my opinion. Kojima gets credit. I mean, let's yeah. just say it like that rather than put any sort of judgment on it. Kojima gets credit for everything that he does, right? You know, it, this is an important part of the um, process of developing the game, you know, a new, in a new language for a new yeah. audience like this. So this guy's, this guy's done a memorable job. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, credits where it's due. It's a really interesting question about the role of a translator or anyone adapting someone else's art in the first place. Is it your job to stay as close to what the original creator wanted and their vision? Or is it more appropriate to adapt what they've done to make it more accessible or easy to understand for the audience and convey the message of what's being said rather than the literal thing? I think it's yeah. a game of uh, semantics or pragmatics in that case. It's a culture thing as well yeah. because um, the way that words come across in, in the Japanese language might not be the same might not come across this uh, the right in the mm, english language no, and, and that's where he's applied his own artistic vision yeah. i guess and his own um, character to the translation and, and made it more appealing to the western market because a literal translation of all the words will not suffice because yeah. it wouldn't convey the meaning of the original like it does in the japanese language yeah. so it's about how much how much leeway that are they allowed how far are they allowed to go before you might upset someone like kojima yeah that's and the question evidently he did end up upsetting him because he, he changed it but apparently he loved it at first when Kojima you know heard the lines and saw what he'd done he was like oh this sounds really cool and wanted to do uh, what they called M Metal Gear Solid Integral which I've not played but apparently that's just the same English VO but then with Japanese subtitles or Japanese VO with English subtitles so you could see the differences because at the time it was very uncommon to have both languages in the same copy of the game Japanese would get the Japanese version the Americans would get the American version and whatnot uh, but then when that work started to be done he realized quite how different things were and wasn't very happy. So the guy, the quote here is from the guy. From what I heard at the time, Kojima began to hear his work had been tinkered with. I'd argue there might have been a lack of appreciation for the needs of localization due to his not being bilingual, but he was not happy. As a result, all future Metal Gear games would be closely monitored for fidelity to the original Japanese script. Now that's something that definitely seems to ring true, for me at least, because one, it's still kind of complicated because of all the espionage and nonsense and double agents and crossovers and whatnot. But then in in two and three, things get way more complicated, and I reckon part of that's down to the writing not being as clear and a bit waffly because mm -hmm. it's so close to his original, you know, script and yeah. hasn't had someone adapt it to make it not necessarily better but yeah. clearer to uh, Western audiences. And even references a line in Metal Gear Solid Five: "I won't scatter your sorrow to the heartless sea. I will always be with you. Plant your roots in me. I won't see you end as ashes. You're all diamonds." And again, there's nothing <laughs> really <laughs> wrong with it. It just sounds daft. It's, yeah. it, no, people don't speak like that mm. because Kojima you're doesn't diamonds. speak a lot of English. He doesn't speak like that. Plant your roots in me. You're all diamonds. I mean, you're, you're, are you a tree now? Or are you a diamond now? I won't see you end as ashes. Or you're going to burn, obviously. You're going to die. I will always be... I mean, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of uh, conflicting kind of imagery there. It's a bit too tangled up in its own metaphors because you've got, scatter your sorrow to the heartless sea. Okay, so that's the sea. That's one. Plant your roots in me. All right, that's a tree. That's two. And I won't see you end Acid ashes, okay, that's three, and you're all diamonds, that's four. <laughs> there's four things going on there, and there's too much. <laughs> I mean, Isn't that Kojima, though? Yeah. Isn't that Kojima true, all over? True. Too much. And the, Too much Kojima. Blaustein even makes a comment about it, like, some people, uh, some fans find this sort of thing endearing, and is kind of like, but I definitely wouldn't have done it like this. Yeah. So he definitely seems a bit bitter about it, but he's not ashamed of it. Like, he goes on to say, though the decisions I made cost me future work, I stand by my efforts, and I'm glad that I followed what I thought to be, ultimately, the most sincere form of flattery and respect for the original. Namely, to emulate the original feelings in reassembly, rather than to leave them as broken 
broken bits, drained of the colour that was so clear in the original Japanese writing. Looking back on the whole thing, yes, there were mistakes and bad choices as well as successful ones, but that's art. Translation isn't science, and after 20 years of Metal Gear Solid success, I think I must have done a pretty good job. Whoa. Ah. Ding, 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 ding. I think that's also great because I hope that he had a hand in writing the uh, Revolver Ocelot sign, you're pretty good, because that's quite iconic and it's in all of them. So if he wrote that line, that's awesome. You're pretty good. You're pretty good. You're pretty good. Pretty good. Altogether, I just want to know what what you what you think. Do you think it's more important to stay 100% faithful to the original writer and what they did in their artistic vision, or is it better to build on and change what they've done, but in an effort to make their vision clearer and more more easily understood by the audience? I think I'm on board with this guy and the way he changed things because without the military specific jargon, blows my mind that he had such a hand in that. Metal Gear wouldn't be the same. Yeah, I think maybe it would depend on how skilled. The the artist translating is. I mean, I guess this guy's got a lot of skills outside of just changing words from one language to yeah, another. Yeah, absolutely. He understands what, you know, the meaning of the words, how they're supposed to be portrayed. Yeah. Um, and Cultural concepts in Japan and in the West and how they would then yeah. translate, not just linguistically, but like logically, I suppose. I, I get how they like it in the East to um, their artistic vision to be become intact. We see, yeah. <laughs> we see it all the time. The things with um, the Sekiro, when we were asking, oh, why, why don't we make Sekiro easy? Oh, yeah. it's artistic vision. Let's stick to that artistic vision. Yeah, I mean, if that's the thing, it, it makes you, gives you pride in your work, um, then you don't want your artistic vision changed, whatever. But if it makes a bunch of other people like your game that wouldn't otherwise, say maybe me, yeah. I don't know. I mean, maybe I'd have liked it if it was a literal translation. Still, I don't know. I mean, I like the original Metal Gear Solid. I can't say that for any of the other Kojima games. Maybe there's, a, there's something to it. I think it speaks to the quality of the original work as well, because if you've not got anything really good to work, with, you're not going to end up with something good after the fact. So Kojima's writing obviously was great in the Japanese, it just didn't quite resonate right in the English, but then this guy comes along and fixes it and marries the two concepts together really nicely. Those is just our opinions though, and we're probably wrong as always. No doubt. But anyway, if you want to tell us how wrong we are, be sure to do so down in the comments and tell us, do you, do you think it's better to stay faithful to the original writer, or do you think you should change it up to make it the message conveyed, but not lose the real feeling of what's been said? As always, if you like what you see and you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the bell. If you want to see our podcast, which should be available tonight, go on over to patreon.com forward slash pretty good gaming. Or if you don't, that will be available probably on Saturday or Sunday. We've not even really decided yet. That's it from us. I've been Henry. He's been Gaz. We'll see you next time. Bye for now. Bye for now.